Laravel validation. To validate a request, first we need to actually give the user a form to create a request. So first let's make a route. We're going to make post create and we're going to map that to the create callback on our post controller. Next we're going to go over to the policy. And we're going to update the create policy ability. And we're just going to prove that the user is logged in within this create ability. After that, we need to hop over on to our post controller. And within our post controller, we want to find the create method. And first, we're going to execute the policy using this authorize. Then we're going to pass the post class in because create doesn't have a specific instance of post. Next, we're going to return the post create blade template. But we haven't created it yet. So let's do that. We're going to go to our show.blade.php, copy that over into a new create .blade.php file. Once we're in here, we're going to replace the post title because again, we don't have a specific instance of post. We just want to show the form. And we're going to replace that with create post. Next, we're going to replace the post content with a new form. Now, we're going to go to our post model real quick and we're going to grab our fillable properties. Most times, your forms will map to your fillable properties. Then we're going to create a input field. We're going to call the name title. Next, we're going to add the class of form control just to give it a little bit of styling. Then we'll close it out. After that, we'll add a text area. For the text area, we're going to give it a name of content. And then we're going to give it a class of form control. Just like that. And close that out. After that, we need to add a submit button. So we'll give it a class of btn, btn primary. And then we'll give it a type submit and then add create. Finally, we need to add our CSRF token to prevent cross-site forgery. And then let's go back down to text area and we're actually going to close that out. Text area doesn't have a value, so you actually the value goes between the element. After that, we're going to go to post create and we're going to simply submit the form. Now what happens? Well, if you see at the top of the screen, that we just get these query parameters. That's not really what we're looking for. So we're going to go back to our form real quick and we're going to add a method of post and then we're going to give it an action. The action is the endpoint we want to post to. So now that we have that set up, we need to actually go to our routes and add a post route for our post endpoint. And then we're going to map that to post controller at store. When we post a post form, sorry, that can be a little confusing. We want to hit the store method. After that, we need to go back to our policy and just prove that if you can't fill the form to submit it, you can't store it. So it uses the same policy. Then we're going to die and dump our request input and then hit it in the browser just to prove we're properly hitting the right input with our data. So we'll fill out our form again, post title, then we'll add the content, and then finally we'll submit the form. And notice, we have our token, our CSRF token, our title, and our content. This looks like it should work, right? So let's add the authorize in, and then just like we did in the create, just create ability with the post class because we have no instance. Next, we're going to say post create, and then we're going to pass in the request input. And you would think that this would work, but it won't. And so after that, when it works, we want to redirect to posts. Okay, guys, so we have everything set up. We have our form set up. We're good to go. The last thing I want to do is I want to add some placeholders right here just to make it, you know, a little more beautified. So we'll give it a placeholder of post title and a placeholder of post content. All right. After that, we'll go back and refill out our form. And when we refill out our form, what happens? I don't think it will be what you'll expect. Man, we get this database error. Field user ID doesn't have a default value. Why the heck are we getting that? We checked our fillable properties, right? Well, those are our fillable properties. Those are the properties that are not guarded to the front end. But if we go to our migration, our post table migration, it says we need a user ID and currently we don't have one. Huh. 
So what should we do? Answer, Laravel validation. There are multiple ways we can validate in Laravel, but the first is to use the validate function on the request object. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna reference the given field, user ID, and then we're gonna define the rules. You can check out the Laravel documentation for many, many rules, and we'll go over that a little bit later. So the user ID is going to be required, and the title is going to be a string with a max length of 255 characters. After that, we're gonna say the content is also going to be a string. But we're not gonna put a max on that. So now we have validation on our request. So what happens now? Let's go to our create form, and let's fill it out again. It's not going to give us the database error that it did give us, but it's not going to give us any error. It's not going to give us any validation or context. So to start off with, let's first fill out our form and we're going to go to our create.blade.php. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this old helper function and it's going to get the old value from the failed validation request. And that way the user doesn't have to refill out the form every time. Okay. But also notice on the text area, it doesn't have a value attribute. For the text area field, you have to put it inside of the text area element and make sure there's no spaces or you'll get some funky looking, looking, uh, looking form. So now when we fill it out, still doesn't let us pass validation, but at least we don't have to retype in the title and the body. But we still need to tell the, our user what's going on. So to do that, we need to go back to the blade template and we're going to do if there are any errors at if errors any, then inside of that, we're going to create this alert, alert danger box. That's going to give it some red background. So contextually, it looks like errors. After that, we need to actually create a list to list out the errors. And then we're going to say for each errors and then all the array of errors as error. And then we're going to end the for each and then just put a list item inside where we output the given error message. Okay. So now when we go back and we create our form, we get the error. And our error is that the user ID field is required. So now that we see our error, let's fix it. We're going to create an input field and we're going to give it a value of auth and then user ID or use the shorthand and just call it auth ID. That's going to map to the user ID. So we're going to give it a name of user ID and then we're going to hide this field. There's no reason for the user to see this field. So now that we're set up, the value is auth ID, the name is user ID, and the field is hidden, we should pass validation, right? And everything should work? Well, kinda. Let's fill out the field, I'll show you. We're back to the database error. What happened? We have the user ID, right? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. We did pass validation because we're getting the database error again. So we're past the request validate part. But that means we're on the post create and post create is erring out. This is where the error occurs. So we don't get redirected back to post because we get the database error. But we pass validation, so why is it failing? Well, check this out. The post table has the user ID. And the post controller is properly getting the user ID. So we're going to die and dump the request input, and we'll refresh it. So we're definitely past the validation, and we do have the user ID. So what is going on? OK, so this one is a gotcha. We need to go to our post model in this protected fillable array. We need to add the user ID. There are ways to get around this without adding it to the fillable array, but basically in Laravel, when you add a property to the fillable array, you're just saying, hey, make this accessible. And once we do that and we reload the page and we submit the same form, it works. So one more time, for example, boom, added a new post, passing validation, and it properly uses the fillable. So that was number one, uh, request validation. The second option is to use validators. Now, validators have three parameters, input, rules, and messages. We're going to set validator to the variable of validator. And then we're going to tell the validator to validate, right? 
After that, we need to actually create those three parameters. We're going to start with input. That's just going to be the request input. Next, we're going to define our rules. Those are the rules we defined below in our request validate callback. And then we can just remove that. We're just same rules, and I'm going to call the title and the content field required so we can more easily fail these for examples. Finally, what's cool about validators is we can add custom validation messages. So the validation messages can be tricky because a lot of times when you're first getting into it, you think, okay, I, I just need to define one error message per field. But that's not how it works. You define one error message for each rule that could fail for a given field. So the user ID has one rule, so it's just user ID that required. But the title has multiple rules. So we have to do title dot required and let's just go on to content with this one. Content dot required. Please add content, right? But then we can also do content dot string. Um this is a uh, awk, but the content's supposed to be a string. And so you can kind of match up the rules with your business jargon. And I love this. You know, like maybe you're a more bomboyant company. Title.string, WTF, add a title dude or do that. You know, like whatever you want to do, but I, I recommend matching the, the validation rule messages with your company's brand. Because validation can be super annoying, but just opinion there. So let's go back to the create form and let's fail these and let's see if we get our messages. And we do. Post title is required, please add content. And if we only fail one, it only shows one. So everything is working properly. And when we do everything together and we pass all validation rules, then it creates the post. So there we go. That is validators. Another thing you can do with validators is you can hook into them and extend functionality. So we're going to say if the validator fails, redirect the user to the posts index page with the errors from the validator and with this request input. So what's cool about this, if a user fails a form on one page, but you still want to like redirect them back to the index for some reason, you can copy that errors section from our create.blade into our index.blade. And now when they fail the form, You'll still get the errors, it will still show them, but it will redirect them and it will show them the errors on the index page. So validators has a lot of cool stuff like that. But I really don't use them much. I prefer this. Form requests. First we're going to make it. PHP Artisan make request store post requests. That will create a new requests directory in our app. Then we're going to go to the store post request class. Within the store post request class, there will initially be two methods. Authorize determine if the user is authorized to make this request, true, and then the validation rules. So let's go back and let's copy the three parameters that we use to create that validator. And then we're going to get rid of all of our validator stuff because we'll implement most of the same functionality in our form request. So next in the rules, all we need to do is return the rules array. So instead of like setting the variables and then passing them in, we just return it. And then we can get rid of the input altogether because this store post request, form request validation classes, they extend requests. So they already know about input. Next, we're going to add this public function messages. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to return what we were calling the messages variable. Now we're going to return the same array in the messages function. Finally, to actually implement this form request, we have to import it into our post controller and that's just going to be app HTTP request store post request. We're going to remove our validator and replace the injected request with the injected store post request. And everything works behind the scenes. That's as easy, like that's as simple as it is to add that kind of validation in Laravel without crowding your controllers. I love that. And then of course, if we try it again, we still get the same validation functionality. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's remove this authorize. If you noticed in our store post request class, we have an authorize function scaffolded out. So can we just add this authorize? Same thing, right? No, 
Nope. Can't do it. But why? Well, one, because you're calling the same function, like this authorized references the authorized function. It's, it's a loop. So we can go to our policy and one of the solutions I see a lot is you can just copy the functionality in your policy into your, your uh, form request class. But this is bad design, guys. Now whenever you change it in one place, you have to change the authentication check in the same place. So instead, let's use gates behind the scenes. We're going to say auth user can create and then we'll pass in the post class. And so that references the policy or the post policy create ability via a automatically created gate behind the scenes. So that's why I like doing with authorize. So now in our post controller, we've completely removed everything but the creation of the post and returning the redirect. So now let's try it again. And before we create our form, let's actually change this to false just to see that we are still properly referencing our policy. And we get 403, this action is unauthorized. Exactly what we wanted. And then if we change it back to just checking if the user is logged in and we resubmit it, it gives us the validation error. So that is how I like setting up my authorization to reference policies within a form request. And of course, if we fail both rules, you'll see both rules. There's a few other things we can do with this class. First one is we can hook into the validator. So by saying public function with validator, we can say, okay, validator after, after the validator runs, maybe we want to add a custom error message. So we're going to say validator errors, add, and then custom error, and then whatever we want our custom error message to be. Then we're going to go back to our browser, and we're going to prove that we saw that. So check it out. Just resubmit the form, custom error message we hooked in to the validator and added a custom error message. Now that being said, you might think we can do what we did earlier with the validator make facade and just say validator false. If it's false, if the validator fails, redirect the user to the posts with the errors using validator with error or returning redirect slash posts with errors passing in the validator and then with input. This will not work. This will not work. So the reason it doesn't work is because that never actually gets returned from the controller. It just gets executed. Never even runs. So we can do some stuff, but sometimes validator make is better. If you do want to redirect the user to a different endpoint when they fail validation, you can use this protected redirect route and then you have to reference the Laravel route name not the route path the route name very important that one threw me off for a while reference the route name not the route path and so if we go to our routes file name post.index so of course in our store post request we're referencing post.index now if we fail validation we'll be redirected but we're not redirected with our post errors and with the input. So I don't really use this too often. I don't really like this. I'm Next, we're going to use another method in our form request to remove this user ID hidden input field. So right now, if we go to our store post controller, or sorry, store post form request, we can add this method, protected function, prepare for validation. And then within this, we can hook into this merge method. We can just say user ID equals the auth ID, just like that. And now we'll automatically merge the user ID into the request instead of passing through a hidden input field. And of course, if we reload it, it does work. Pretty cool stuff. One more time, for example, boom. So we just removed the hidden field from our index.blade. So now let's focus on rules. So we have that required rule and we have the string. Well, Laravel offers all of these rules. There's tons of them, guys. And each rule goes through, you know, they're pretty, most of them are pretty simple and there's pretty good examples on basically all of them. But what if you wanna make your own custom rule? Uh, let's go uppercase post title. 
for example. And we're just going to say uppercase rule function. And the first thing we're going to do is create a callback function with three parameters, attribute, value, and fail. Now, if the value does not equal the uppercase first value, so the value with the first letter capitalized, we're going to trigger the fail function, which is stored as a variable, with the attribute, aka the field key. And then we're going to say must be uppercase. So that's going to be our fail with this form message. The title is what we're going to do. Next, we need to come down here and we need to change that piping to an array. And then we're just going to pass in that callback function. And then, of course, remove the string pipe. The array and the pipe separators, they do the same thing. So now, if we go back and we submit this form with the lowercase title, check this out. The title must be uppercase. We added our own custom validation rule. And if we uppercase it, it works, and we create the post. So pretty cool stuff there. Um, there's one other way to do this, and this is actually what I prefer because it makes it more reusable. PH, or sorry, Laravel has a generator command, PHP artisan make rule. And we're going to call it uppercase rule. That's going to create a new rules directory in our app folder and then a class. And it's going to have three methods, the constructor and the passes. Passes is going to accept attribute and value. And then we're just going to say the rule passes validation when the value is equal to the value with an uppercase first letter. Then we're going to use the special colon attribute, and that will actually reference the attribute. So we can use it across different fields. The attribute field must be uppercase. That will translate to the title field must be uppercase. Finally, we need to come back to our form request and then import that rule class and new it up and pass it into the array. After that is set up, then we can go back and properly run that exact same rule. And we'll do lowercase again. And we'll get the title field must be uppercase. So that's how you create your custom uh, validation rules. And then if it's uppercase, it works. So guys, that is Laravel validation in a nutshell. Separate.